getting the levels right before you export the final mix of your podcast is crucial. In this video, I want to have a look at Ozone plugin from Isotope. Hi, it's Mike from Casefile. Casefile presents. On this channel, I'm releasing videos on podcasting. So if you enjoy the content, you can hit the like button. Ozone is a mastering plugin from Isotope. You got three versions of it. Element, Standard and Advanced. I've been using Ozone 9 for years now. And in this video, I wanna show you how I use it specifically in podcast production. In my work, I'm using Ozone 9 Advanced, so the versions uh, with all bells and whistles. But before we jump onto Pro Tools and onto Ozone, I wanna talk about mastering. Mastering, in short, is the last step before we release the track. It's the light, touches, EQ, and adjustments of the loudness is that little extra that makes the track stand out. And that's kind of the standard definition of mastering. However, in podcasting, I view it slightly differently. And that's because when I work, when I produce podcasts, I have all of my plugins running and open at all times. And the same goes for mastering plugins. And that, of course, is because the deadlines are very tight and also because in especially continuous podcasts uh, with continuous shows, you've got frequent episodes, sometimes weekly episodes. And the other thing, when I think about mastering, when I do mastering on my podcasts, is that I can kind of mash it with a QC, which stands for quality control. So my last listen of the podcast before I export it uh, is not only checking the mix, but also doing the slight adjustments here and there. And the difference to normal mastering would be, of course, in standard mastering studio or uh, suite, you would have a stereo mix down and adjust that. Now, in my template, I have all my tracks open and still uh, separate. So I work uh, within the same template from the beginning till the end. So it's just a different perspective on mastering that I have when it comes to podcast production. Now I wanna jump to Pro Tools and I wanna show you how I actually have my Ozone 9 Advanced set up in my template. Let's have a look at my Ozone 9 setup and I'm going to show you on within case file session that's how I use it the most but of course it's kind of the same setup for any project I do and we're interested in master track which sits at the very end it's called master minus 16 dB because that's how I export that's the LUFS I export to on case file and Ozone of course sits at the top so it's Ozone 9 Advanced, and I'm using a lot of modules there. There is a saying that you shouldn't be using plugins if you can't hear how, how they affect the sound, because if you, don't, if you don't know what they're doing, then more than likely they are making it worse. And I've experimented with stripping it down and then adding these modules again uh, when I sort of rework the presets that I'm uh, using, and I always felt when I bypass one of these modules, I always felt that something was lacking. So I'm, I'm using them, even though some of them are very, very soft. Uh, I start with low end focus, and low end focus, what they, what it does is sorts out the low end, the muddiness of the low end. Uh, when we play audio, you won't be able to hear it, but you can see that's the area that it affects. And that's the sort of frequencies we can solo, we can listen to the, uh, to the difference between that unprocessed input. What I'm doing there, so you've got a couple of options there. You can make the contrast there. And what it does, it separates the bass from the rest of the mix. So for example, when you've got a kick drum or some sort of bass guitar, you want it more punchy, then you would go up. For podcasts, you know, I don't want that. I want that um, uh, 
base the low end sort of blended with the rest so the contrast is there probably 40 percent and i'm also at 0.5 tb minus gain on low end so i'm trying to control that low end make it smooth add it to the narration then of course we've got eq um because it's a mastering plugin it looks like I'm cutting a lot, but it's not really. So I'm cutting anything below 40 hertz, which is, you know, like sub frequencies, and then like 0.9, 0.5, things like that. So slight frequencies and then slope, uh, it's a tiny slope there on the high frequencies. Dynamics, so then again, it's a multiband compressor, uh, several bands playing there, and uh, my high frequencies are kind of soft. But then going down with mids and of course low end, that's when the compression is kind of, you know, working a little bit more harder. But then again, you know, the knee, the attack, um, it's not, I'm not overdoing it. And then I'm using Imager, and again, I can split it in few bands. Imager is, um, is a module that sort of does the stereo imaging, it spreads your mix, your master, and as you can see, the band one, which is low, I'm actually on the negative uh, I'm on a negative parameter there, which means it actually focuses the low ends rather than spreads it uh, to stereo. And then a slight and stereo eyes um, there as well. And we can see how it affects the mix. So, So we got a lot of it happening in the center, but you know, it does venture there. So I want to have, you know, the focus, the voice in the center. And then whenever there is the music, just sort of sitting on the left and right, not too much though, uh, of course, depending on the, on the situation, but I, I am using it a bit. I, t I used to have it a little bit higher in the past, but as I did scale it back, then I got vintage tape, which is sort of like a saturation there. Um, and you select a few different options. Again, it's not a lot, sort of 2 dBs of uh, drive input, a little bit on harmonics as well. And it's because um, I have any sort of saturation switched off or exciter on the dialogue and it's very soft on any other tracks. Uh, I'm sort of making up for that on my mastering plug on my mastering track there so just adding just a little bit of that saturation there and vintage tape helps and a spectral shaper is sort of like a multi-band compressor i would say i don't know how i would describe really what it does it kind of smoothens the frequencies that are selected you know makes them not as harsh <laughs> and that's why I'm using them on these mid frequencies. Again, there isn't a lot that I'm doing there, but I found that when I have it bypassed, I can sort of hear that it's not there when comparison went on. And uh, so I'm using on these sort of 1K, 2K, the harshness of a human voice. It makes it really, really smooth. So it depends on uh, what's your goal and then exciter of course so i am using exciter on the master just a tiny bit so 30 percent on all the bands the amount is also not that much especially on these uh, meads but you know i'm using warm profile dual triode on low end and again i'm making up for not having any sort of saturation on any other tracks or having very soft. So I'm trying to make uh, that master sound a little bit brighter, a little bit warmer. 
And then of course the maximizer, which is the, um, you know, the most important one, which is a limiter. Now, the way I'm using maximizer is that I want to have my mix at minus 16. And you can play with your threshold and tropic, of course. But I'm using the learn threshold, which is like a rider. You would, like you you get gain rider, and that sort of acts the same. So instead of having one threshold, depending of what's being placed on the fly, it rides that uh, limiter threshold, making sure the target minus sixteen. Um, is applied to pretty much uh, the audio. So I want the audio to be even, and the ceiling is at one, uh, minus one dB. And that's because when you uh, compress the audio to MP3, you always lose a little bit of that headroom. So having it at minus one, you make, is making sure that you won't hit that zero and you won't distort the sound. So what I do is I have that learn threshold, and as you can see, it's riding the um, the threshold line there. And then it's kind of on the slower side how it applies. When I hit it there, so on the faster side, there would be clicks on the um, first syllables of the word, so it would clip. So I have it a little bit slower. And that's about it. The one of the most important functions that I use on Ozone, and that's during mastering stage or la later mixes, is that. So the codec option enables preview of these um, lossy compression, and we've got different selections, so we can do formats there and bitrate. And I'm using MP3192, that's how I export a case file, and other shows. If I was doing one to eight, I would of, of course switch to that. And then you switch it on. And now, wherever you're listening, it will sound as it would be MP3 192 uh, bit rate. You can also solo to hear all the artifacts, you know, what's happening uh, when you encode that audio and that's great because it gives you an idea how the final podcast will actually sound because of course when you're listening to uncompressed waves nice headphones it sounds great but that's not how people listen people listen to mp3s on earbuds so of course i'll have my earbuds connected i'll have them on and then listen to um codec preview that's how I use Ozone, at least for case file, for other products, I may get rid of some of these modules. For example, for, on Pseudocide, I only used, uh, you know, EQ, Dynamics and Limiter, uh, not much else, but that's about it. It's a great software and I recommend it for anyone, really. So would I recommend Ozone to podcasters? Well, it depends. It depends on how complicated your podcast production actually is. Uh, if you work on simple shows, then I guess just doing basic EQ and volume leveling um, on your master track will be enough. If you want to dig a little bit deeper into mastering, you can try Ozone Elements. That's the most basic option of the plugin. And it's a great way to sort of familiarize yourself with the tools from Isotope. Myself, I find that Ozone makes my mixes so much better. And of course, there is still a chance that you can overdo it with all the bells and whistles and modules that come with it. And I certainly done it in the past, but in the end, you know, the interface is so intuitive and so quick that I don't need to spend a lot of time on mastering, especially like I mentioned before, with these tight deadlines and frequent releases. I'm looking to, you know, make it as good as I can, but also in a most efficient way. Ozone 9 um, Advanced is part of the furniture in my studio. I started on previous versions and I do update whenever they come out with the 
latest version. Let me know if you're using it for podcasting or maybe you have um, some other mastering plugins set at the end of your signal flow. But that's it for today. I'm Mike Migas. If you enjoy the content, you can hit the like button and check the rest of my channel. For now, you can share, like or subscribe and I'll see you later.